Hey everyone, and welcome to the studio. In this video, I'm gonna do a kiln opening. That's right, so here it is, noon on Sunday, and for me, Sundays are a day I really like to do kiln openings, for many reasons. It's kind of the end of the week, it's a culmination of a bunch of work, and also, it's a way to me, for me to assess everything I've been making and think about the week ahead and what I'm planning on. And you know, in pottery, the whole making, the, the whole making process, when you think about making and then bisque firing and then glazing and glaze firing, this is the end. This is the culmination of everything. So all that you've been working towards for whatever period of time it is, this is the end, and that's why I like to share this. And in these kiln openings, I like to share the glaze, the clay, how I applied it, and answer questions. Now, I do want to remind you all that these are filmed live. This intro is not live. I do this beforehand, but the rest of this is going to be filmed live on my Facebook page. It's just Clay Share. That's my company. Go check it out. And if you're not subscribed here, go ahead and subscribe to me here and be sure you hit that little bell so you know when there's new videos. And I'm doing about one to two new ones a week right now. And of course, if you want more pottery videos, I have about 250 full length classes. Some of those classes are three hours long, which equals thousands of videos, thousands. And it's streaming and there's so much awesome stuff on clayshare.com, so check that out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open this kiln and see all the goodies. And if you have questions, please put them below in the comments and I will get to them and answer them. And if you wanna come and hang out and be part of the fun, go to the Facebook page and check it out when there are live broadcasts. And you can comment live and I will answer them. Hey everybody, so it's noon on Sunday. You know what that means, it's time for a live kiln opening. And I've got myself a lovely cup of mint green tea and my farmhouse chicken mug. Yeah, look at this cutie pie. This mug has become one of my favorites. It's really funny how sometimes you'll make pieces and you won't really think about, you know, what you're gonna do with them when they're done, like who's gonna use them. And this one was one that just sat in the studio for like three months, nobody bought it. And one day I grabbed it because I needed a mug and I've fallen in love with it. It is so cute and it's just a simple gray on gray. It's actually fog gray is the um, first glaze and then I dipped cream on top. So that is what is on this and it's really a beautiful mug. Good size, hand built, but I love it. So it's one of my faves. Anyhow, let's get started and open the kiln. Hi everybody who's joining me live. It's good to see you all. So this was a cone five glaze firing. I did a one and a half hour preheat and then I did a medium speed to cone five with a 10 minute hold and I have a negative 45 degree kiln offset. And I know that's a lot of stuff to be writing down if you're keeping track of it, but it's just what I did and people are gonna ask me what I did with the, with the firing, so now you got the information, right? And this is my beautiful l, l kiln. I think this is my fifth glaze firing since I got the kiln in July. So hello everyone, let's get started. All right, we're gonna open this up. This. I glazed all day, Thursday and Friday. I was actually glazing till about nine o'clock at night on Friday. Started the kiln at about 9.30. It finished up at, well, I don't know, I think 8.30 in the morning, Saturday morning. And it's been cooling ever since. And this kiln has the three inch fire brick all the way around, so it's really well insulated. So it, it takes it longer to cool than one with two and a half inch fire brick. So if you're trying to buy a new kiln and you're making that big decision, do you want a kiln that has two and a half inch or do you want three inch? There's a couple considerations. Well, two and a half is gonna cool faster, three inch is gonna cool slower, that's a plus, but three inches is gonna take a half an inch off each side all the way around, right? So it's halfway, half inch. So you're losing an inch all the way around. So I think you're losing like a uh, half a cubic foot. Something to think about it. Yeah, just think about it. No big deal. All right, let's get started and open up this kiln. As you can see, we got a bunch of pots. Some of these pots in here are from classes. Some of these are gonna be classes. Some of these are just pots I made. That's it. I mean, I made them all, but you know. Let's start. Where should we start, everybody? I don't know. Let's start with a sweater mug. Why not? This glaze here is um, but let's just start with the inside. The inside's my Chun Blue, the clay Laguna B mix, the treatment on the surface when it was bisqued. 
after it was done, I put Georgie's Interactive Pigment in Sand and Surf. That's one of their pigments. If you don't know them, check them out, georgiesceramic.com. I put that on, wiped it back, and then I put their super clear glaze, so Georgie's glaze on it. And that's what gives this finish. And then again, that blue is my Chun Blue. Do you guys like that? I think it's gorgeous. I'm really happy with the way the sand and surf with the clear on the outside works and they kind of speak to each other. The blue on the inside really speaks to the colors on the outside and it creates this nice cohesive look, but not boring, right? Not boring at all. So Christine, you're at an art show and you think customers will mind. <laughs> will your customers mind if you're watching me, watching me open the kiln instead of talking to them? Well, maybe put it up so they can see it too and everybody can see the, the, the pots coming out of the kiln. Yeah, so in little buttons, and this pattern is actually the Trinity pattern. It's a silicone fondant mold, and we're giving away three sets of sweater molds and button molds at the end of September to all ClayShare.com members. Woohoo! So members win, everyone. Uh, what else do we have in it? We have so much. So we'll just jump to some things. These are just some carved mugs that I've made, uh, carved black I put on black speedball underglaze when it was leather hard, carved the pattern into the surface, and then put my chun blue on it. The chun is a little, it's a little thick, just, just, but it's gorgeous. Uh, little, a little thick, but, so what did I do because it was too thick? I actually knew it was too thick when I was using it, and I went ahead with these because I applied it and I saw that the, the glaze was too thick on the pot. So what I did is I added some more water to the bucket and then I glazed other pieces, but not these. These already been glazed. So is the Trinity mold one of the giveaways? Yes, Donna. So the Trinity mold, so I've got three sets to, three sets to give away. Two that are the ribbon cable knit and I'll show you a ribbon cable knit mug next. Let's do that now. Let's just do that. Let's just talk about that. Why not? Um, this one, I love this mug too. Let's, let's hold these up. So we have this, this is the rib and cable knit. You can really see it if we hold it this way. And this is the Trinity knit pattern. So these are the two patterns. And I'm giving away two of the cable um, ribbon knit and one Trinity. And each one of them is gonna come with the molds to make the buttons. And when I say molds, it's not a mold to make a mug. It's a textured mold. It's like a, a little, silicone fondant mat that you press into your slab of clay and it gives you it gives you beautiful texture see like that so that's the sweater knit in this pattern and hold on I will and this pattern so you can really see the difference this is going in for a refire there's one little area where the glaze didn't fill in I'll actually show you all so you can see it right see if it comes in so I'll show that focus says no not gonna focus. Um, there's an area right here. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of clear glaze on it and then refire it. Happens, happens all the time actually. Usually in every kiln mode, there'll be one or two mugs or whatever pieces that need a refire, but it's a simple thing. So Trinity versus the cable rib knit and the glaze on the cable rib knit is field mouse brown and then over dipped in my spearmint, which if you guys like this spearmint glaze, and I have more pieces with it, I've been talking with Clayscapes. I think they might make it and sell it so you guys could buy the glaze and not have to make your own glaze. You just buy it. How can you beat that? You cannot. So that sweater mug, um, this one is just a little hand built. Now, this is interesting and I wanna show this because it's the same glaze treatment as this, except for one thing. So inside, both are chum blue. Outside, both have Georgie sand and surf pigment on it, but this one has the super clear on over. This one has my chun blue. So you still can see that this one has texture. You can still see the texture in both of them, but this one is a bluer cast. So you could do that um, really easy. And my Chun Blue is already being sold, made and sold by ClayscapesPottery.com. 
And you know what? We have a discount code that they're going to offer you guys. If you buy any of the Clayscapes Pottery Glazes, Amico Celadon Glazes, or Amico Potter's Choice Glazes, you can save 10%. And it is um, Explore 10. Explore 10. Like, explore glazing and save 10%. So someone's asking me, are they 4 by 12 templates? Yes, they are. So someone um, just asked, what were the templates I used? This, this one was a 4 by 10. Actually, this one might have been 4.5. I'm going to correct myself. These are both 4.5. So they started out with a, as a, they began their life. Let's, let's just tell their story, right? They began their life as a slab of clay that was 4 inches tall, 12 inches long, and then got rolled up and shaped. This one, I just put a tiny bit of volume in it. This one, I just went a little crazy with it. But that's the difference. Would they be a little smaller if you did a four by 12? A half inch, right? So these ones are a little bigger, just a little bit by half an inch. I'm pretty sure those were the four and a half. I have templates that are four by 12, four and a half by 12, five by 12, and five and a half by 12. And all that does, it doesn't change the diameter, it changes the height of the mugs. So I can make smaller mugs, I can make big steins, whatever I want. And, um, you know, it just, it just means that, it just means that you have lots of options when you're making pots. So let's see, uh, you, someone, so Clayscapes Pottery has brushing glazes now. Yes, they do. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. All right. So those of you who have watched my YouTube video, you'll have seen my most recent one at the time of filming this. It was glazing a cup. And this is the one I actually glazed in the video. So look at the results. Oh my goodness. That's pretty sweet. Melty, melty goodness. What are the glazes? It was Bushwick on the inside, Park Slope on the outside, and two dips of cream. One dipped it to here and the other to there. I almost got too excited and couldn't speak. <laughs> oh, I want to give a huge birthday shout out to Josie. Happy birthday. Did you guys know it's her birthday? Wish her happy birthday. Just saying. <laughs> love the way this melted. I love it. Love, 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 love. Very happy. So I call this my sunrise cup because it's like the sun rising, not the colors, but the idea of, you know, it's like, oh, hello there, hello sunshine, have a beautiful day. Actually, it's my sun, oh, hello sunshine mug. I don't know, I don't know. I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> what else? Uh, another one that I had with some decals, chun on the inside, clear on the outside, decals from Sam Bao Studios, and Everybody's been asking me when my line of underglazed decals is going to be out, and that will be the end of September, first week of October. That's coming. So just hold on till then. I am going to be having four designs, and then it'll probably be another three, four months before I have more designs. So maybe every, like, every quarter, every four times a year, there'll be uh, a little batch of underglazed transfers with my designs on it. Sherry says she's playing with decals. Yeah. Decals... Oh my gosh, just, it's just so fun what you can do with them. And on that mug, I mixed the same design, just two different colors. You'll order mine too. <laughs> okay, what's next? All right, so this is, we'll do, we'll do pots that our class is already on Clay Share. Um, and so someone just, Susan just asked me, did I notice that Sambao has multicolored decals? Yes, they do. But you have to design them in multicolor before they can be that way. They can't turn a solid color design into a multicolor design. So mine are solid color designs. So they'll either be red, green, blue, or black. That's it. And Tammy asked, can they go on greenware or bisque? They go either, either way. Either way, either wear, either wear, either green wear, either bisque wear, whichever way you want. They can do both. It's entirely up to you. This is the super cute hand built little um, utensil holder that I did a class on. And I glazed it with my Field Mouse Brown, but here's an interesting story. I want to share this. This is actually Field Mouse Brown. This is Field Mouse Brown. How come they're not the same? 
It's not a test, I'll tell you. So here's the thing. I mixed my glaze up in the bucket and then I dipped and poured my field mouse brown. And then I let it sit up for a minute and then I dipped my spearmint, right? So I did that. And then I decided, I don't know, maybe five minutes later that I would do this with the same glaze color. And what happened is the glaze had, had settled just a little bit and I dipped it in here. So it's a much thinner application. I really like it. It went a little more matte. You know, you still get, you still have really nice texture. You can see all the design on it, but it shows you one glaze, two options. I actually want to turn it this way. So you really just see the, the colors. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So this is a way, not all glazes are good like this. If you sometimes glaze something too thin, it doesn't look good, but the field mouse brown hmm, looks good. So there you go. Um, and again, I over dipped the rim with spearmint. And you, t you guys tell me what you think about that spearmint. If you want to be able to get it, Drew says he'll make it. Um, uh, field mouse brown is the recipe is on my on clayshare.com. You can get that there. I don't know if Drew is going to make that. It's actually, um, you can get the recipe from clayshare.com, so it's out there. We'll see. I don't know if he's going to do it. So no green, intense yellow, would I say? Oh, you guys are working. So I love how when I'm filming, doing the live, everybody will help each other out and answer questions for each other. I love that with our community and how you guys support each other. That. That is what I want because that's that's what we all need. We need a community that will support each other. Yes, we want it. Can he make the field mouse brown? Drew, can you make the field mouse brown? <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, something rather timely. My Owl Lantern class, you might have tried this out, but if you haven't, go make it because look, it's almost fall. I'm in flannel today. Today is the first day of the year that I'm wearing flannel. I probably will be wearing it between now and April because it's cold. It was only 53 this morning. And this super cute lantern, um, I do have a class on, like I mentioned, the glaze on here is Amico's Potter's Choice Deep Fire Brick and then Potter's, Amico Potter's Choice Seaweed on the top and it is two coats of the fire brick and two coats of the seaweed. Warning about the deep fire brick. It can run. So I actually only did one coat at the very bottom and then two here. Could have put a third on and got a deeper color, but it does tend to run. And the seaweed, it runs too, but that's what we want. We want the runnies. <laughs> we can't always say that's what we want, can we? <laughs> Anyhow, so, so many people are commenting that it's in the 90s where they are and still hot. Come to Vermont. It's 53. You won't be hot. Bring your flannel. It's cold. Well, I don't think it's cold yet. It's chilly. It's seasonable. <laughs> it's time for cider donuts, hot apple cider, walking through the woods. The leaves are changing. I'm going out to, um, I'm going to be going out for a walk today, a nature walk. I'm super excited. After I work a bit, I'm going to film this and then film another class. After I do this, I will be taking the rest of the afternoon off. Charlotte says 53 is cold. It, it depends, right? It depends. Garlic Keeper. Uh, this is actually a newer class, but I had the one I made as the demo for the class. This is it. The glazes on this. Well, let's tell you what clay it is. This is Laguna B Mix 5. No grog. So you can see the clay body right there. And that's that. Let's not drop. Take the lid off. If you are turning things with lids upside down, please take the lids off. I did a craft show once and a gentleman came up to my booth, grabbed a big carved vase that had a lid, turned it right over, lid fell, smashed the lid, smashed the pot it hit. And he was like, oops, sorry, you can fix that, right? Mmm, you can fix that, right? I was like, no, sir, I'm sorry, I cannot fix that. And he's like, oh, oh well. And he walked off. I was shocked. Shocked. 
So after that, I started taping lids at craft. So here's a good tip. If you do craft fairs, farmers markets, you might want to tape your lids on because people will turn your pots over and dump your lids out and break your lids. Terrible, right? So Sherry, you've done that yourself. I know with your own pots, we do it. So maybe we need to tape our own lids. <laughs> All right, the clay was Laguna Bee Mix. Um, it, it has Georgie's Interactive Pigment and Autumn Foliage on first, wiped back, and then eggshell wash two coats. So Jolene has a comment. She says she puts on the fire brick. It never runs. Um, it doesn't run for me, Jolene. No, I, but I tell you who it runs for. I've had people send me photos of what they've done in their firings and it has run and stuck to their shelves. And because of that, I always tell people, keep in mind it could run and stick. Now, they could be firing to cone seven. So um, let me grab that piece and we'll talk about what, what we're talking about. So I put the, the two coats on um, here of the deep fire brick under the whole thing. Now, I'm only going to cone five, so I'm not really having a running issue. Could I have, I have no running. There's zero run. We can actually see the bottom. There's no dripping, nothing. We could, in fact, I could have put a third coat on, maybe put four on and gotten a little deeper brick color, but I have gotten quite a few messages from people, and a lot of times if you work in a community clay studio and you're not firing the kiln yourself and you don't have control over the temperature, some people will want to go to cone seven. Some clay studios fire with a clay that's cone six to cone 10. So they do go to seven. Um, so just keep that in mind. So you've never had it run either, Max. Good to know. All right, so hey, I could be wrong, but for me, I'm just putting it out there as a caution because I don't want anybody to have any, I don't want you guys to ruin your pots. So there we go. It's just a disclaimer. <laughs> So, Kara, you had the lid situation happen to you at a farmer's market with a kid dumping your thing over and it broke. And the mom just said, time to go. So, what do you do in that situation? What do you do when somebody comes and breaks the piece? Well, if you don't have any signs anywhere saying you break it, you buy it. Or you could be nicer about it. You don't have to... You don't have to be like, you break it, you buy it in like a mean way. It could be, you know, Please be careful. If you break it, then you will have to pay for the piece. You could do a nice little thing like that. And so it doesn't have to be harsh and unwelcoming, but it's kind of the idea. If you break it, you should pay for it, right? <laughs> I have, right. So Felicia just mentioned, thank goodness I have a class on how to maintain your, your shelves. I do, because when your glaze runs, you've got to clean your shelves. So I have that. I have that because if you don't know how to clean your shelves, you won't clean your shelves. Okay, so the, the next two pots are going to be classes that aren't out there. Oh, so Debbie said different clays will make it jump off. Let's grab this. So some clay bodies will make this deep fire brick glaze jump off. Interesting. So Laguna Bee Mix, you're good. You're really good. No any problem. Interesting, I got a little message the other day. Someone was at their local clay supplier trying to buy some clay and they overheard the people there talking about how there's a shortage of B mix or that it's back ordered because me, because of Jessica Putnam Phillips. Not that I buy it there, but because I recommend B mix all the time. I love it. It's a very versatile clay. I don't have any problems with any glazes in B mix. Like every glaze I've ever tried on B mix has been great. So why wouldn't I recommend it? We got some more pieces with B mix right now. Okay. This little planter. Oh yes. Let's let's just oh my goodness at the cuteness happening here. This is a hand-built class I'm going to be filming this next week. Look. Ooh, texture on the bottom, texture on the side. Lovely little ruffles on the rim. So this will be a nice planter. I did not um, put holes in the bottom. So if I'm going to put succulents in here, I'll put rocks in and then my succulent planting mix. And then that way it'll drain. So Carolyn says she's heard that too about B mix because Laguna has been working overtime to catch up with the demand. I love it. <laughs> 
sell out the sell out the clay, right? Uh, hand built, couple different things going on. I will show you how I did everything here. And the glazes are Amico's Celadon in deep sea, and then seaweed on top. Seaweed, you already bought your marvelous molds, so you're waiting on the class, Charlotte. This is happening, I know. Oh, thanks, Peggy, I'm glad you're here to make the, the kiln opening. So this one I'll be filming, oh, look at that inside. Mm-hmm, wait, let me see if I can get it right there. Yum, the drips, the, you always, oh gosh, it's so good. I wish, I wish you could see it in person. I wish, I don't, I don't, oh my goodness. Even on the sides, look at the iridescent. It's just, it's just beautiful. We just turn it around, turn, 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 this way, turn, turn. <laughs> It's beautiful. So two glazes, deep sea and seaweed, both from Amico. I need to do mugs with these. I need to do a mug with these combos because I'm in love with the iridescent. I, I love iridescence. I always have ever since I was little and that's why I use mother of pearl on everything. And this makes it so I don't have to use mother of pearl. It's already kind of done for me, right? So I know, look at these colors, so good. So B-Mix is part porcelain, right? It is a porcelainous stoneware, which means it probably has kaolin in it, which is the main thing in porcelain. So yeah, and because it's porcelainous, it has a few things you've got to be a little, you got to be a little aware of when you're working with it. It can behave like porcelain, but if you treat it right, it'll treat you right and you'll get lots of good stuff from it. Um, so the last piece on the top, this is just the top. <laughs> We're gonna get through though, I promise, is this, which is going to be a class on Clay Share. I will be filming that probably the end of the week. So this is a wheel thrown mug, but you could do it. You could do this on a hand built mug if you want. And then we added petals, but I have some tricks that I'll be sharing with you. Um, so for this class, I will show you how to throw the mug and handle the mug and everything. I will handle it. And then I will show you how to do the petals. And the glazes on this, now remember this is, this is Laguna B Mix as well. You can see the glazes on that. Nice, right? This is, these are all Amico Celadons. Every one of these. I know, yummy. Inside is Marigold. And then here's Poppy. Here's Tangelo into the rim of Marigold. So it's an ombre mug. Uh, so Amy asks, is there a cone five and a cone 10 B mix? Yes, there is, Amy. I use cone five, because that's what I'm firing. My kiln here is a cone five. Well, no, my kiln can go to cone 10, but I'm only going to five. So you don't want to use cone 10 clay if you're going to be firing to cone five, because then your clay is not vitrifying and you're not gonna get the best results from your glazes. This glaze turned out perfect. Wow. Yellows and oranges and coral and yummy, yummy, yummy. There's a little song of the day. Yummy, 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 yummy. Um, or we could sing the wiggles. I won't do that to y'all. Uh, okay. Cone pack from the top. We're going for a cone five firing. So here we have cone four. Cone five, cone six. We got there. Perfect. Uh, I, <laughs> I'll have you know that I was watching this kiln as it was firing on my app because it has an app. And I saw it when it hit top temp and it was dead even top, middle, bottom. I was so excited. I actually was upset because at one point, um, at one point it was one degree off on the bottom. And Kevin was like, you're ridiculous. You can be one, one degree off. Um, so that class, yes, Lana's asking about that class. You could hand build the mug. The petals are hand built. So you do not, you know, we're not throwing the petals. All right, let's write, let's mark this right now so that we don't have any problems. Um, what's today, the sixth? I don't even know what day it is. Is that sad? I work so many days in a row, I never know what day it is. Um, nine, someone tell me the date. <laughs> I will, I can't remember. Is it terrible? This is top. So this kiln is the E23T 
from LNL with the Genesis controller. The Genesis controller is a computerized controller that is connectable. It's a digital controller and it connects to the app. It's pretty fabulous. It's the eighth. See, I thought it was the sixth. Don't ask me to date stuff. I don't know what's going on. This is what happens when you work till nine at night, like every day and you get back up the next morning and come right back to it and you just don't stop. Um, I promise I'll take time off in a couple years. <laughs> all right, so we can go to the next level. Uh, oh, by the way, did you all check out the newest issue of Ceramics Monthly? October Ceramics Monthly, if you open up the cover and you flip to the back side of the cover, there's a full page ad from LNL Kiln. And uh, guess who's in the ad? Oh, who could it be? I'm not going to say. You have to guess. Who is it? Um, so today's Debbie's 29th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. I know, 8th already. Let's take this one out. Oh, so these were some more finishing up pieces from previous classes. Uh, I had a lot of bisqueware that needed glazing from past classes. And I had, it's not that I don't like glazing. I would just rather make more pots. That's just how it is. I would much rather spend my time developing more pots and making them and then dropping my posts. No, I don't want to drop my posts. But um, honestly, that's what I would rather do. And so what happens is the bisqueware sits on shelves and needs to be fired. And I put it off until there's no more room and then I have to glaze everything. You too. You, you just want to make pots. I know. <laughs> on the cover. I know. Did you guys see it? I was pretty excited. I knew it. I knew about it a couple. I knew about it because I took the photo. Um, wall planter. This is the second to a pair that I had made. So there's two of them. Where's the other one? Oh, there it is. Here. So this was in the last glaze firing. <laughs> Sherry says she hates glazing. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I just want to make the pots right? But then you get this for your results and it's so nice. So, ah, all right. This is what I want to show you. These were made in at the same time. They were the same pot. Wait, they were thrown on the wheel, right? So it was the same pot. I cut it in half, put slabs on the back, filmed the class, taught you all how to make this so you know how to do it. This one got mother of pearl. This one didn't. So you can see the difference, the pearly one here, so shiny, but this isn't bad. But what I really want to show you is this is glazed with the clay, with my chun blue, both are with my chun blue. And they're available from, you know, Clayscapes Pottery. But here's the thing. This is the brush on Jess's chun blue. This is the dipped Jess's chun blue. I want you to look, look at them. Look at that beautiful, right? And I'm really happy with the dipping. Well, I think I, I think I actually did better with the brush on than the dip on. So this is what I want to show you. If you're trying to decide if you think you'll like the brush on version, if you are one who brushes on glazes, I think you'll like it because the brush on one looks good. Dip looks good too. Brushed, dipped, brushed, dipped. Right here, Drew. Drew just said, how's the brush on? This is the brush on. This is the dip. Brush, dip. You guys got it now. Nearly identical. Nearly. So, they look good, Drew. You did good. And those of you on YouTube who are like, who's this Drew? Drew is at Clayscapes Pottery. He's a kiln expert and glaze expert. So he and I work together on developing glazes and things and all kinds of fun stuff. So you already pre-ordered your brush on glazes. You're gonna love it. Here is that field mouse brown again. Uh, let's turn it this way. That's my pin flower pattern. That's the design that's on there. And this was one that I dipped and poured, this glaze. And I'm gonna tell you, it, oh, oh, what clay is this? This is the, oh gosh, it looks so good on dark clay. This is Laguna 90. This is the Laguna 90. 
and it looks really good. Now, how did I dip and pour it? I'm going to tell you. I, I, I did it like this. I held the casserole dish. I have five gallon buckets. I held it like this and I submerged the entire thing right up to my fingertips in it and then pulled it out this way, holding it like this so it dripped off, let it dry completely, turned it this way and just dipped the tiny bit that needed it on this side. That's it. That's how I glazed this. It was easy, easy, easy. But look, what I really want to show you is a dark clay that shows off gorgeous texture. Oh yeah, see? So I have a little bare area. Guess I didn't get it covered enough. That's fine though. The dark clay really highlights it. And then I put the spearmint on top. And the way I put the spearmint on is I took a brush, swirled it in the spearmint glaze, and just kind of loosely brushed it around the rim. I didn't want a big, thick glaze. I just wanted it to have a nice accent. And you'll notice that if the field mouse brown gets a little hot, look, it's a little shiny. It's not really that matte. It's beautiful. So this is ready to go bake. And it's autumn. So apple cobbler, anybody? Come to my house. I'm going to be making gluten-free apple cobbler. I'm not kidding. And then I have one, I have another one further down. We're making mac and cheese in later today. Ah! So you wait, I'll show you that one. But you know what? This one's, this one's so good. It's going here. It's going there. I put it, I put it in the place of honor because it's so good. I love it. Here's another casserole dish. Uh, let me grab, I mean, we will, we'll take the shelf out first. We have to earn seeing the glazed pot. We have to earn it by unloading the shelves, which is boring, but uh, needs to be done. Because you can't get your shelves out if you don't <laughs> remove them. Oh, I'm so glad that came out good. Okay, so we have a casserole dish. <laughs> Amy's coming. She's coming to eat the, ca the um, apple cobbler. This. Oh, I'm so happy, so happy with this. It's like a big smile. Look, it's like I got a great big happy smile. This is a wheel thrown casserole dish. I've got, you know, I don't even know if I should say I've got a class on it because basically if I make it, there's a class on it. Um, I'll share my recipe, Felicia. Uh, Clayshare is gonna have a new subcategory called Clayshare Kitchen, which is gonna be where I keep all the recipes from the things I make. I must have a lot of cupboard space. I don't know if it's so much a lot of cupboard space. I just stack everything. <laughs> Anyhow, this is, oh, what I really want to show. Laguna 60. That's their tan speckle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. It looks so good with the spearmint. Drew, you have to, you have to make the spearmint. Cause look, Look at the speckles coming through. The speckles are coming through. So nice. Um, so when I did this, I wanted to have an area that was a little bare in between. I wanted a lighter application. I wanted to really see, uh, oh my gosh, but look at where the two colors came together. So the site's available now, Debbie, to sign up. Clayshare, go to Clayshare, tv.clayshare.com or clayshare.com, either one. So we dipped. I did it like this. This is how I glazed it. I'm too excited. <laughs> All right, so I say I hate glazing, and then this happens, and I'm so excited about the result that, um, and then I glaze everything, I, right? Then I glaze. So I, I held it like this, and I dipped it to here in the bucket of spearmint, and then I let it dry all the way. But the spearmint had settled a tiny bit, which means this part, it was dipped really thinly in the spearmint. And I, I did that on purpose knowing this glaze would give me this glossy finish, but yet not as much color because I wanted a little more interaction. And I let it dry all the way, turned it over very carefully, actually ended up holding it here and dipped it to right there. You can see the line right there. So I created this design that has three colors. We have the spearmint, and we have a bright blue, and then we have right in the middle where they come together, and it creates that loveliness. Would love to that dish. Yes, make it. You can make this. It's really easy. It's really easy to make. So it's a nice deep dish, great for a side dish. 
I like to make them in pairs because then you can nest them up against each other and you can have like the yin and yang sign for your casserole dishes or, or it looks like a, a kidney bean, right? So that's the side, the handles, all, all of it, the whole piece. So it's, it's a win. And the spearmint glaze and this blue glaze, I think Drew should do the blue too, but we'll talk. <laughs> this, is, this is going back here too. And there's, there's uh, one more casserole dish in the very bottom, and that's with a brush on. So the blue glaze is one I make. It's just my, I think it says iron blue, but it's really bright blue, and it's on clayshare.com. And it's a really great, great glaze. Uh, pierced bowl. Yeah, I'll remember the pierced bowl. This is Laguna B Mix. I did a little playing with slip trailing, and oh my gosh, did I go crazy thick? Yes, I did. It's so thick, you can't really see the slip trailing. But this was the last piece I glazed, and I realized, oh, my, th my chun is too thick. So I had to take care of it and thin it down. So now it'll be thinner. It wasn't so thick that I had crawling or any problems, like technical issues. It's just uh, obscures the, the slip trailing. But the color is beautiful. Ah, Jenny asked me, did I put grog on the shelf for casserole dishes? Not those two, but the bigger one on the bottom, yes. Those two are smaller, and I didn't really worry about it. But the big one, I have a huge, I have one the, the whole bottom. It's huge. I don't know what I was thinking making a casserole dish that big. I'm not going to be able to eat all that. I mean, what are we making in that? Lasagna, right? It has to be. Ah. I put this video up the other day on my Instagram and Facebook feeds just showing how to use the underglaze to stain a um, texture. And this right here is a plate I made using GR Pottery Forms WA. That's their little wheel assist attachment doodad that they make. And you drape your slabs over it, but you could also hand build a plate. I pressed a lace doily into the clay while well, it was still a slab, mind you, and then I peeled it off and that left this beautiful lace pattern behind. And then after it was bisque fired, I did speedball underglazes. Now what are the colors? I'll walk you through it. So we'll, we'll go with this one. Center is orange, yellow. The next, like speedball has a color called orange yellow. So that's the center. The next ring out is melon and then pink, and then the very edges is red. And then for the greens, I applied pine green for the leaves, and then aqua for the little netting area, and then I did aqua, I did a little aqua edge, like that. And again, this is Laguna B Mix. And then the clear glaze, so after you do all that, you put all your colors on, you wipe away all the extra, so you're just left with the color in the textured areas, and then I dipped it in my clear 2167. So that's a clear I make in the studio. And again, the recipe's on clayshare.com. And that back is signed, black underglaze carved through, so you can see my signature. Nice, right? So you could make this with the square GR pottery forms, you could make this with the round ones, you could make it with any of the forms. The technique can be applied to anything though. You don't have to use GR forms. And if you're going to buy GR Pottery Forms from GR Pottery, make sure you use the Clayshare discount code because I want you to save money. So that's a little... Be sure to save when you can. If you're buying something, if I can get a discount for it, I will do it for you guys. That way, I can save you all. Ah, okay, there's a, there's a piece I kind of thought was going to be a problem, but I tried. Well, we're going to look at, we're going to look at it just a second. Oh, uh, what else do we have? Oh, so we have brush on glaze tests from Drew. And I've got, let me put away, I gotta put away the little kiln post. Yeah, I love the plate. It was really, really nice. And the fact is, you make something like that and it's really pretty to look at, but it's completely functional. You can use it, which makes it even better. I have one I did similar in blues, so the roses are all different shades of blue. 
So that doesn't have to be, you know, warm tones. I'm really into them lately, but you could do one in blues. All right, uh, I guess we can do the little dishes. I'm gonna pull these all out and we'll talk about these. Some of these are the brush on glazes. Some of these are not. <laughs> How's that? Some of these are, some of these are not. And, um, is that, that is, okay, yeah. So, you can't wait to see the brushables. I am gonna share them with you right now. So these three are not, these three are not <laughs> the brushable. They are all on Laguna 90, which is a really nice dark red clay body. This is that bright blue and that spearmint that were on that casserole dish. Beautiful, right? And then this is the field mouse brown on a dark clay. So I just wanted to show you, and again, Drew, make the spearmint. <laughs> Drew is gonna be, oh, do you guys remember? So um, YouTube won't remember, but those of you here on Facebook will remember when my chun blue when I was trying to get Drew to make and sell my chun blue. And he was like, no, 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 we have blues. We're not, we're not gonna, no, 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 I don't know. And, and everybody pestered Drew to make this glaze. And now, yes, and now there it is, you can get it. See, so I think he listens to us. <laughs> uh, the brushables. So this is wheat brushable. So it's a clay skates pottery glaze. This is it on light clay. The black is just me messing around with an underglaze. And then this right here is on the Laguna 90. So you can see the wheat on the B mix, the wheat on the Laguna 90. Weirdly enough, I feel like it is, I don't know, I think they're about the same. You would think it would be different on the dark clay, but no, it's not. So. <laughs> so those look good. The wheat is actually surprisingly pretty. I thought it would be bland. And then I have Starry Night on, on Laguna Bee Mix. And this is Aqua. Both of these are brush on glazes that Clayscapes is now selling. So you can see them. And you can still see the texture. I went a tiny bit thick, but. Um, so someone asked me, how big is my kiln in liters? Ginny, I couldn't tell you liters. It's cubic feet. That's how we measure kilns here in the U.S. So it's a, I, so normally it would be a 7.3 cubic foot kiln, but because I have the three inch fire brick, I think it's 6.8 cubic foot. I could be wrong. I mean, those are pretty, those seem like pretty exact numbers, but I don't know. <laughs> ah, this is a nice one. And it's a good um, one to talk about the glaze. So this right here pattern is my succulent design and it is a rolling pin. It's a textured rolling pin I designed. And there it is sideways, but I made this vertically. I can tell because I signed the back vertically. And this right here is autumn foliage interactive pigment from Georgie's. That's what I applied. And then I put their super clear on top. So that's the clear glaze on top. Now, if you use another clear, you will get a different result possibly. So I'm just telling you the actual glaze I used. If you want to create this right here, now you know. That's it. You know. You got it. You have the tools. So uh, thank you. So someone said that the kiln's actually 192 liters. Awesome! So if anybody wants to know how many liters my kiln is, it's 192. So that's this on the Laguna Bee Mix. Again, oh, it's so cute. It needs some cheese to go with the apple cobbler I'm making later. <laughs> right? Um, okay, so this was my boo-hoo moment. When I, you know, I just did that um, pumpkin truck, Christmas tree truck class that just went up this week. When I was loading the Christmas tree one into the bis kiln, I broke it. I broke it. Uh, what does zinc do in Georgie's? It changes as, well, that one is zinc. That's super clear, which has zinc, Gene. We'll, we'll go back to that. Let me finish this and we'll grab that back. So I broke this little guy. Oh no, we broke it, but I'm gonna epoxy it back together. And I did already make a replacement so those of you who wanted to see what the Christmas tree truck looks like finished, 
I glazed this one in the class and I showed it to everybody and the sad part was this broke but it's okay I'm gonna use some E6000 epoxy and I'll epoxy it back now this right here is B-Mix Clay, the red is Snapdragon, the black, this is Amoco Snapdragon Celadon, the black is Amoco Obsidian, and then the green is Amoco Potter's Choice Art Deco Green. So that's what this is. And so I did make another one, it's drying, and it will go in the kiln, and hopefully I don't break that one, but this one, oh well, it's okay. But look how cute this is! Cute! Cute, cute, okay. So we're asking about what does zinc do? This has zinc in it. This clear right here is called super clear. It has zinc in it. If you use their zinc free clear, you get a different tone. It's more brown. So if you're looking at this, you see how there's some greens in it? If you use it with the zinc free clear, you'll get less green, more brown. So that's, that's what you'll get. Um, Georgie's has a whole line of interactive pigments and glazes that work nicely together and you can check that all out. I did not put the truck on stilts, Ginny. It fired flat on the kiln shelf. My little like advice for you if you're going to fire, fire, hold on, let me get it. I love, <laughs> I love visuals. I feel like if I'm talking about something, we need to see that thing. So because this is a flat object, you want to fire it flat because if you put it on stilts, it might slump. Now, if it's made of earthenware, you probably won't have that issue, but this is B-Mix and this is going to cone five. So it probably will slump. Now I fire it directly on my kiln shelf, but here's the thing. You must check to make sure your kiln shelves are completely flat. If you have cupped or warped shelves, your piece, could potentially cup or warp or even worse crack in half. So if you ever are firing things that have flat kind of big bottoms and you go to check them in the kiln after they're fired and they've cracked, that could just be that the kiln shelf was the problem. Hmm, I know. So Robert says that's the truck he learned to drive 60 years ago and it's still cute. It's a great truck. I love it. So this will get um, put back on and I'll hang it up and can we see oh you can barely see wait 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 right there right there there's the pumpkin one and this is the Christmas tree one cute how do I keep the glaze from running onto the shelves well the glaze is a cone five glaze I fired the cone five and if you look at the side um, the celadons the amico celadons are really stable they don't run that much so I go ahead with a sponge and you can see kind of right here. I just wiped back right there, see? And that's all you need to do with these glazes. If you use somebody else's glazes, they might run. So all I can vouch for is these Amico ones. They're very stable um, and they're very good for this application. So I didn't know if it would fuse back together, but it didn't, it's not a big deal. And I made another. So this is, this is, this is part of it. Sometimes things break. All right, so this last piece, that's all, there's just one more piece in the kiln. Whew, we're almost done. And this last piece I made with the brush on cream glaze from Clayscapes and I put grog on the bottom shelf. Now the very bottom of my kiln, I have one big full round shelf. People ask me, why do I use the half shelves? Well, as sh <laughs> shelves are heavy. They are, unless you buy the Advancer ones, which are those crazy thin shelves, but they're like $100 a piece, and I can't afford that. So I fire half shelves, and I have a full shelf in the very bottom for big things. Now because my kiln fires even top to bottom, I don't worry about pieces on the bottom getting too hot or too cool. That can be a consideration. But for me, my kiln is even, I don't have to worry about it. So I put a layer of grog down and then I fired the piece on it. So we're going to grab that out. And actually, I might make you wait a minute and we'll do the cone pack first because I don't want you to leave until you see the cone pack. <laughs> it's like back in the day in school, you have to have a reason to stay, right? 
this was the top. Oh my. This one, because I wrote top. This is the bottom. Here they are. So we fired this kiln. I fired the kiln. But I like to have you with me too. So I say we. And we can hold it like this. And if you look. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello, dead even firing. Yay, yay, yay. So the top and the bottom fired to the exact same temperature. Even the little cone six that started to bend are at the exact same. Um, do I put the bottom shelf directly on the kiln floor? Good question. I'll get that. So even the cone six is bent the exact same angle. Perfect, perfect. I knew it was perfect because I watched it fire and I saw the temperature, but until you see the heat work, which is what this measures, you don't really know. So Lorelei just asked me, do I put the bottom shelf directly on the kiln floor? No, I don't. I usually use a little one inch kiln post on the bottom and I rest it up because you need the flow. Plus I have a vent on the bottom and if I put the kiln shelf directly on the vent hole, it'll keep, it will clog it up, right? So you have to have it raised. So you need the airflow. That It's better to have airflow. It, what, Air is not bad in your kiln. Air is what you want when you have proper airflow. You need circulation so that heat can move around and be even. So by running the fan, right, having that shelf kind of up, it makes a huge difference. So the Amico Celadons be stable at cone six, Jenny wants to know. They should be. This is cone five. We're only about 40, 50 degrees off of cone six, if that. I think you could probably be okay. Yeah. I used to do cone six, now I do cone five. One's not better than the other, it just is. You know, I just, everything likes five. Okay, so this is the big casserole dish. Look at the grog stuck to the bottom. Yuck, right, right here. But watch, oh, it just brushed off. Anyhow, I will still sand it off um, afterwards to make sure it's all nice and smooth. But I did fire with a layer of grog. And here's the thing. Now that I have a whole bunch of grog on the bottom shelf, I have got to go to remove it. I have to vacuum. So I'll be vacuuming the kiln shelf. Jill wants to know why do I do five over six? <laughs> I just answered. Right, and the, the, the clay Laguna B mix is five, right? Remember, Laguna B mix five is the clay. It likes cone five the best. So that's why I do that. How many holes did I drill into the bottom for my kiln vent? Jenny, I didn't drill any, it came drilled. It came drilled. So to mount the vent, it, I didn't have to drill any because when you buy a kiln from L&L and a vent at the same time, they come together. So I didn't have to do that. Okay, let's talk about what this awesomeness is. This is me putting on way too much glaze on a casserole dish and crawling happens. And I'm showing you this because imperfections happen right there. Do you see? This is two, I only put two coats of the cream brush on glaze, but I think I went way too thick with it. And when I was applying it, I was thinking to myself, that's too thick. That's way too thick. And look, it was. So what has happened? The glaze has been too thick and it actually pulls away, but it's still sealed. Do you see the shine? Do you see how it's still vitrified? So functionality wise, it's fine. I can use it. But aesthetically, you just got a bare spot. And layers for brush on, for this I did two, but with the brush on glazes from Clayscapes, you add your own water. And I don't think I added enough water. And Drew and I talked about this a lot. And I, I felt like it had too much water. <laughs> so I didn't add more and I should have. So will I refire it? You could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just use it because it's sealed. If you rub your fingers along it, you can feel it's fine. It's just aesthetic. And yeah, let's talk about the best part. The speckles from the cream on the Laguna 60 clay. That's the clay body I used here. That's this clay. And you see, when you look at it here, you can kind of see the speckles but they don't pop. You put something like cream on it, and then, oh my goodness. So can you fix a crawl? Not really, Amy. It's kind of, crawling is one of the things you're kind of, you just have to own it. Could you try to refire it? You can. 
I've never had crawling, um, well, I guess I could say there's been a mug or two once in a while. Go ahead, put a little blob of glaze on there and refire it. Let me know how it works out. It might work, right? But if it's usable, I'm just gonna use it. So this is a giant, look how big this casserole is. It's so big. Um, so this is the, I'm gonna make like lasagna or mac and cheese or something awesome in it, right? So there it is. All right, so there's the kiln opening. It was uh, pretty simple, straightforward. I have to tell you that the thing that's made me the most happy is this right here. Ah, this one. This one has made me the most happy. All right, so there we have it, a great kiln opening. You know, I just wanna say that with kiln openings, you don't always have 100% success. There's always a piece or two that you could have done better. There's always a piece or two that you might need to go back and reglaze. That happens. You know, like that great big casserole dish that had a little crawling because the glaze was too thick. Can I refire it? Probably. You know, I could probably go back in and put a little glaze on it and refire it, but I probably won't. Mostly because that's a piece I plan on keeping and using as far as functionality goes. It's fine. It's completely usable. There's no need for me to refire it. It's a completely aesthetic issue. It is sealed. It is vitrified. So we'll see. Um, but most likely, I'm just going to go ahead with it. Now, I always like to, to end the, the kiln openings with my favorite pieces. And this kiln actually had a lot. And I'm looking around at them I'm like, ooh, that was good too. I absolutely loved the way that this came out with the Amico potter's choice glazes. I love the way that seaweed dripped on the inside. Now this was three coats of the Amico downpour and two coats of the seaweed on the top rim but only one coat on these little side bit, bits here. That's it, just one. Uh, two coats could have done, might have run a little bit because seaweed tends to run but very happy with this glazing and again these are brush on glazes and not everybody likes to use brush on glazes and that's fine you don't have to but this is a good option for many out there and you know what when I first learned I learned how to mix and formulate glazes from scratch and I only ever made my glazes in the studio and I developed my own formulas I developed my own signature glazes and that's just from years of practice but now if there's a color out there I want to use I'm gonna use it I don't care if it's a brush on glaze and somebody else made it and I like it, I'm using it. For example, right here, this. Amico Celadon glazes, all of these. So it's the Celadon, Marigold, Tangelo, Poppy. I love those. Could I make my own? Yeah, I totally could formulate colors that would match these if I wanted to spend the time to do that. But why should I? Why should I when Amico has already done it, they do it very well, and the time that I would spend figuring out these glaze colors and how to make these, I can be doing something else. So I don't need to do this. Somebody else has done it for me and I'm perfectly fine with accepting that. You know, for me, it's more about being able to make pottery. I don't have to formulate every single glaze I use. I don't have to have that, that's not a thing. So anyhow, this came out great. Now, talking about formulating your own glazes, my Chun Blue, which is a glaze I formulated, that's on the inside here. And it's a gorgeous glaze, I love it. But here's the thing, it took me about five years to get this glaze perfect, perfect enough for someone to make and sell, right? So it had to have a lot of testing done and I used this glaze for about 15 years before it went into production. So it's a glaze that I have used many times, I'm very familiar with, and I put a lot of work into it. It took a long time to get this glaze right. Now, I don't really wanna do that with every glaze just because I want to use three colors like this on one mug once, right? Like I wanna do a mug like this. I may never do another one like that. And because of that, I'm just gonna use the Amico. Now I, I have my Chun Blue and I use it a lot. I do love it because it's my glaze. But if I didn't make this glaze, I would wish I had. <laughs> and again, the outside um, are two glazes. Well, it's actually a glaze and a pigment and that's from Georgie's Ceramics. So I put the pigment on first after it was bisque, and then I wiped away the excess and then I glazed it with their Super Clear. That's the, the name of their, that's the name of their glaze. So you can really see what it looks like. And the top, I just dipped my Chun, 
on the very top, kind of thinly. But I love how it shows off the texture and how they work so well together. So these are kind of like my, my picks of the kiln, if you were to say. Although there was a lot of really great things in this firing, I hope this help you, helped you out with glaze questions or ideas for things you might want to glaze. The reason I do these is because when I was starting, you basically had buckets of glaze and maybe a teeny tiny little tile showing what it would look like hanging off the bucket. There was no information. You didn't know what stuff looked like layered. You didn't know what it looked like on texture. It was kind of like the Wild West. You just glazed and hoped for the best. So I do these to show you finished pieces. I tell you what I fired my kiln to, so you know if you want to get similar, similar results, you fire to those temperatures, right? And you should be good. And I just want to give you ideas, and that's why I do this. Now you might not enjoy these kiln openings, and if that's the case, I hope you didn't watch the whole thing through. <laughs> but if you did and you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Share the love, right? Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on my social media. And you know, you can follow me as Jessica Putnam Phillips, but really I'm most active now as Clayshare. That's my company that I started a little over two years ago. And that's basically what I do full time now. That's my, my gig. I work for myself, filming classes, teaching people how to make pottery, teaching people how to glaze their pots, teaching people how to fire kilns, clean their shelves, you name it, I teach it. And it's a really great resource for those of you out there who are just getting started or maybe you've been doing it for a while and you have some questions or need a refresher. We also have an amazing community. You might have heard when I was doing the live broadcast during the unloading, all the questions from our members, most of those people have been with me since the beginning, but some of those are new and just finding me. And we have this amazing supportive community. So if you're looking for that in ceramics, come check us out on clayshare.com. You can actually see the brand new OTT platform we've just launched yesterday, which is tv.clayshare.com, which is crazy good, amazing. You have to see that. And then of course, go to Clayshare's Facebook page. We have a couple groups there. And we also have our Instagram, which is clay underscore share. And on my Instagram is where I share little daily kind of videos and inspiration. I actually showed that plate with the roses on it. That plate there, I showed how I applied the underglaze and wiped it back. So you'll get a lot of tips and techniques there too. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me here in the studio. And until we meet again, make great pots.